So in this video, we're going to be uh, exporting uh, files and showing you the options for that through the Tinkercad uh, website. Um, the reason why I have moved this out, I was working in Safari on this MacBook, and I've moved it out so you can see where the download is going to show up. Um, using this uh, computer from uh, the Makerspace, it asks you for permissions, just a heads up. Um, usually you should just go to the Downloads folder. So another th important thing to note is knowing where your downloads are going to download to. <laughs> um, so uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, it's going to be different for your computer than it will be for mine. So we're going to do two different uh, exports. So I'm going to show you the first with this ornament. Um, so we're going to, uh, there's two ways to download, uh, to export something. There is this, uh, you can click right in the center of that and you can download something. And this is going to just try to upload a uh, digital version of this here um, to look at. So you know it's going to be downloaded. And then it's going to prompt you with uh, which file format. You want STL files. Um, but as you can see, there's also formatting for laser cutting. And keep that in mind for our uh, next month's projects. Um, but I'm going to go in this other way instead. So instead of this, you can either go straight to this and say tinker this. Or click on it and then say tinker this again. Same way, same button. Um, so this is the reason why I go into the uh, file instead of downloading on the outside. Uh, I will show you for the table and share uh, why that is the case. Uh, if in, this gives you a little bit more control, so you can. I'm going to select this, and then I'm going to export this. Now you'll notice that this one for downloading and exporting looks a little bit different. Sorry, did not clarify. Export upper right corner. Uh, there's import, export, and send to. I've only ever used these two. Uh, send to came a little bit later. Um, but this is also how you might want to... There's different like, websites that you can upload it to, like if you want to upload it to Thingiverse or something like that. So export, upper right-hand corner. Download and 3D print is what I said when I hovered over that. There's two options. These options are not available when you export uh, outside of the file. Uh, and so you have that option to select individual objects within the Tinkercad document uh, when you see the work plane and everything. So I'm doing select uh, the selected shape and STL. Now in this case if you had done uh, either one it would have been fine. Um, everything on the work plane or selected shape. So we're just going to allow that um, and then I can see down here in the download section of my uh, Mac computer that this is now uh, down here, the ornament here. And this is trying to open with free freeform, which we do not want to do. All right, so we're going to go back, and I'm going to show you how we're going to export and prepare the files for the uh, table and chair. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different. So uh, anytime you move to work on a new one, it's going to move over here to the left, and it tells you how when was the last time you worked on that. So I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to just do tinker this uh, right away. Okay. Oh, I'm going to note something. Uh, back at the beginning, on the dashboard, you'll see that that uh, seat was gone because it saves it however you last used it. Um, and I said that if you go back inside again, it'll still be, it'll pop up. And it did. Just so you know that, uh, what that looks like. Okay. So, as you can see with this, I don't actually want to export everything that you see here. Um, and so I want to make sure that I'm only exporting these objects. Again, this is why you go inside your document and do export so you can select the things you want to select. But before we do that, we want to reorientate this table um, so that it's easier. I'm moving it a little bit further away from this chair uh, so that there's no overlaps. Uh, if I didn't, and the method that I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror this. Uh, it could risk uh, connecting to that if I forget to export it, but we're not going to do that because we're doing one more step to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> All right, so going back. Okay, moving this over, giving it a little bit of space from this chair, and then we're going to go up to mirror in the upper right corner, and then we're going to mirror it down. So now your chair legs are sticking out. And that way, uh, if you had it the other way, when there's support structures, you'll understand more about this. You come into the Tinkercad extension, and that part is we're going to show you how it sets up a file for you, uh, and what that looks like. 
uh, when through that process. Uh, supports, uh, this image is in your packet, uh, have to fight physics. You know, essentially a 3D printer is a hot glue gun that follows a path by a computer. And so it will sync without this. And so you want to make sure that uh, you can reorientate it so you don't have to do that. Some files aren't going to be that accommodating. But since we designed this, and since y you as a designer can design it however you want, you can reorientate something so that you don't have to worry about supports if you don't want that issue in the future. So we're just going to deal with this, uh, flip it over, and that one is ready for exporting. Now this one, does you can't actually do that with this uh, chair. Um, sometimes you might think, oh, what if I just like reorientate it, say like 90 degrees? Well, you could, but first off, um, I've mentioned the D button before, how it doesn't actually, it only, it takes the lowest point and makes that kiss the surface of the work plane. And you can see as I go underneath that, all of that is floating, which means all of that's going to need supports behind the back here and underneath here and for these table legs right here. I mean, the chair legs right here. So you don't want to be doing that. This is actually the simplest way for you to print something and will give you the cleanest look. Any effects that come from the support removal, if they're not very pretty, they're all going to be underneath. So they're not going to be visual, visible uh, after it's designed. And that's kind of what you want anyway. If you had a real chair, you know, any of the raw edges from like, say, a wooden chair uh, would show. So it's going to have that same effect. So these are now ready and prepped for 3D printing. And we're going to do these one at a time. Uh, some people like, oh, let me, I'll do the pieces. Like, what if you had another chair and uh, you wanted to orientate that a uh, different way and you're like setting up the file for all this and I want it to look like this room that I've set up. When we remove something off a print bed, um, if it's not all connected to one another, like if there's not another piece that's like acting like a floor, and connecting all these pieces together, these are all gonna be separated anyway. So why not save yourself that step and just export it in separate pieces? Um, you can set it up however you want to and you'll have more control over that anyway. You won't have to worry about, oh, is that exactly where I want it to be, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so let's move our extra chair for example. And we're just gonna export uh, this one chair individually, that selected shape, STL. It's gonna ask for permission again. And now you've seen it drop down to the downloads. Let me fix my table back. Export it as an STL, allow and go. So let's see if I can open this up in the, I have so many documents. Ah, keep trying to do it there. I'm gonna open this with a preview. And then open this. With preview. Okay. So as you can see, uh, when it's exported, uh, if I did it all in one piece versus this uh, table alone. And so this would be something that uh, when it's brought in, it is ex we see it exactly how you exported it over here uh, as it's upside down. So when we bring it in, uh, it follows this work plane as the flat surface and we bring it in and it would look exactly like that. Um, if you're doing it with this other file here, uh, it's gonna come in like this and we can't reorientate that. So we could, if we reorientated it uh, to print it upside down, so that, that side's flatter, we can't defy that. And something to note, that's not a flat edge right there. That's actually an angle um, going into this file right here this top of this chair is slightly angled, so it will never go flat. And because of that, it you don't want to, uh, you wouldn't want us to print this for you like this. So this is why we do this uh, reorientation, preparing files, being mindful of how you're designing. It's something that you will develop over time. So don't beat yourself up if your next print and the thing you decide on designing your own just doesn't turn out the way you want it to. This is the process, it's okay. This took me years to get to this point, and you got a little bit of a shortcut, so hopefully it'll take you a little bit less time. Um, so now you have these prepped for this, and uh, next I'm gonna show you how to upload this 
uh, and have it ready for the makerspace and so we can view it uh, through the internet.